Hello my friends. Today I'm going to show you how to make a wash basin for the bathroom using the slab technique with a unique mold. I purchased this clay in the city of Cunha in the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Cunha is well known for its ceramic arts community and this is an excellent clay for work that will be fired at high temperature. Like most clays, you must do the wedging process well to get the air out of it. Otherwise you will have weak spots and possibly explosions in the kiln. To make a good sized basin, we will use between 3 and 4 kilograms, about 10 pounds of clay. That's a large amount. It will be heavy and it takes a bit of work. Don't underestimate the importance of proper wedging and want to avoid unpleasant surprises later. On a piece of canvas, we are now going to start opening the clay body. It's a lot like pizza dough, but you must take your time and go slowly. We're going to pat it like this to flatten the clay into a slab, but pay attention that it stays round. Seriously, do not rush this process. From this point on, we start to stretch the clay, slowly dropping it on the canvas repeatedly. That way it opens up for us. We have to turn it from time to time to maintain this round shape as best we can. Now you have to be careful here because the outside edges can get too thin. We'll speed up the video here for a while, but keep watching. Just make sure you don't allow this slab to get too thin. About 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch is good. And remember, depending on which clay you use, it can shrink by 10 to 15 percent between drying and firing in the kiln. Okay, we're ready. I'm going to use a rolling pin. The one I have here is made of plastic and it might be the worst ever. Well, that's okay. A bigger pin might work better, but this one will do just fine. This next part of the process is very important, both to smooth the surface of the slab and to even out its thickness. Compressing the clay like this also helps to prevent any micro cracks from forming. Later, a small crack may want to grow and ruin your basin. For the mold, I'm going to use this glass globe from a very old chandelier. It's the right size for me and it has a very round shape. But notice this, if I put the clay directly on this non-porous glass, it will stick to it. Then as the slab dries and wants to shrink, it will certainly crack. That's why we put a stretchy cloth over the mold, to allow the clay to run freely over it. Ideally, it should be almost like spandex, more elastic than the one I'm using here, because fewer wrinkles leave fewer marks on the clay. Now, with all the care in the world, we transfer the slab onto the mold. It won't matter if it doesn't lie directly on top because my mold is really round, right? This slab, which was flat, now needs to become round like this globe. And clay has a memory like an elephant. So there's only one way. With a flat board or a paddle, we'll make the elephant forget it was ever flat.
Once more, we will work the surface gently with the rolling pin to get rid of those little wrinkle marks. Let it rest for a while, wrapped in some loose plastic. It will gain a little firmness over time, but check it from time to time. If you wait too long, the slab will crack, so how will you know when it's time? If you can move it like this, without it deforming too much, then it's time to separate it from the mold. This is almost to the leather hard state, but not quite. Don't let the piece dry too much while it's still on the mold. Even though the cloth allows it to move a little, we can't forget that it's a lot of heavy clay, and the weight of it will be felt all the way down to the rim of the basin. Because of the convex shape of the globe, it can crack your piece if you wait too long. So, when it's ready, and before you remove it from the mold, cut the hole to pass the drain. Maybe you have a cookie cutter or something else. Just be sure the diameter of the hole matches your drain after it shrinks. I like to use the foot of this cottage cheese container with a hole cut in the bottom to let the air through as I push down. This is the right size to fit my drain, a spin back and forth, and that's it. I will save the globe, but we still need the cloth. This basin is one of my first attempts, and it went wrong because it seems the guy who wedged the clay was not careful enough. Well, live and learn. But this failed basin will be perfect now to support the new basin while it's drying. In the same way that we did with the mold, we are going to use fabric here to prevent the clay from sticking and to allow it to move freely as it dries and shrinks. The basin is large, fragile, and awkward to handle so be very careful with it. Here you can already see the marks that were left because of the fabric. If you choose something stretchy to lie on the surface of the mold with fewer wrinkles, these marks will be minimized. When you see that the clay is getting to the leather hard stage, you can smooth these marks on the interior surface using a spoon, or a flexible metal or a hard plastic rib. Avoid using water at this point, as it encourages cracks in the surface. It is necessary to transform the edge of the drain hole into a funnel shape, so that the water doesn't accumulate in the bottom and so that whatever the size of the drain hardware you use, it can fit properly. For this, I use one of my favorite tools, a good old Bic lighter. A little more drying time and our piece will be quite firm. It's time to work on the outside of the piece. The basin is already a little easier to handle now, even so you always have to be very careful. I recommend supporting it with some towels. Now use your favorite blade or metal rib to even out and smooth the outside surface. Once this is done, we will wrap the piece loosely in plastic again and let it dry completely. The next step is bisque firing the piece. We will leave that to Norberta. Oh, what? You don't know about Norberta yet? She's my wood-fired kiln. See the link there in the corner of the screen? Go check it out.
and it's ready. These basins here are the first two I made to order. The next step is glazing, but that will be the subject of our next video. If you liked this video, don't forget to give your thumbs up and please also subscribe. This will help our channel to reach more and more people.